Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is day four of our five days of card making and we are making this card today. Now I've already painted this little scene. It was in my plain air painting and I will link to it, but I wanted to show you how you could take a painting that you've already painted and create a beautiful frame and really elevate the entire thing. So I'm cutting the painting out. I'm leaving a good edge around the painting so that I can use that edge to glue it to my frame. I'm using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. I'm using a nine by 12 inch size, my letter sparrow paints and my butcher tray to mix the paints on and a filbert brush to create the stripes. So I decided for my frame to create this gingham pattern um, and I wanted it to be a very similar yellow orange color to what I have kind of very faintly going on in the background of my plain air painting. And so I've mixed up the right color between yellow and magenta. You can see kind of those yellow orange colors poking out in the painting. That's what I want to accentuate with this frame. You want to make a decent amount of wash so that you don't run out of the specific color that you're mixing midway through the project. It's not totally impossible to just mix up another similar color, but it's just easier if you start out with a large amount of wash for a big project. If you're doing a smaller frame, you're not going to need as much wash, so don't worry about it if your paper is not as big as mine. Um, and you'll also be able to tell that when I'm making these stripes with my filbert brush, uh, it gets dry pretty quickly because this filbert brush doesn't hold a lot of paint and water. So I just go back over the stripe with more paint to fill it in. I haven't measured anything out for this project. I'm just eyeballing it. I want the stripes to be pretty much the same width the part, but I want it to also look really loose and not totally perfect. So I like that the stripes are not perfectly straight. They're a little bit wavy and wonky in some places. I like that some areas of the stripes are lighter than others. So I'm not trying to fix it too much. I just wanna make sure that the stripe is a solid color. There's not anywhere where maybe there's white patches because there needed to be more paint. And I'm just not really worrying about the rest. Now that I've finished with my vertical stripes, I'm going to paint my horizontal stripes. The most important thing though is to make sure that your first set of stripes are completely dry before you add the next layer of stripes that gives us the gingham pattern. This is because watercolor is transparent, so you're going to get that beautiful classic gingham pattern by just letting the watercolor do the work and overlap. When it overlaps, it becomes darker. So those squares where the lines meet become darker than the rest of the line, which creates that gingham look naturally with watercolor. You might notice when you see me paint something like this that I'm really not looking for perfection. Everything's a little bit rustic and rough in some areas. I think that creating the frame in this rougher, loose style will actually complement the original painting really well because the original painting is kind of a rustic feeling and it's depicting a road up north by my grandpa's house. So I just figured it would kind of complement each other in kind of a country feel. Okay, so now we need to let all of our stripes dry and everything always dries a little bit lighter and more dull than you might be anticipating. So go as bold as you can. And I am mixing up a color that needs to complement this color but be darker than this color so you can see i started with um a color i thought was okay i started doing some lines and then i realized it is not standing out enough it needs to be darker i added a little bit more magenta to make it a deep uh orangish red and i'm just doing very very light lines in those dark squares when the lines overlap I'm using very light pressure with the very tip of my brush and I'm just doing lines in the same direction, kind of at a diagonal to the squares. I am not trying to make these lines perfect. Some are thicker than others, some are thinner than others, some are darker. It's all going to lead to the overall effect that I'm trying to create. So this is a style that you might have seen where people will add lines in these squares in gingham and it's so stinking cute but you shouldn't worry too much about making all of your lines perfect it's kind of the point that they don't all look perfect
And then as I reached the final stretch of adding these lines, I was just like, this is real time. This is real speed. I was just over it. I was going fast. So um, if you're impatient like me, these lines still look really good. And I think they get cut off anyway because I trimmed the piece anyway. So I think that's probably why I was like half over it. Like, are these even going to be in the final piece? Let's just let's just get these lines done <laughs> real quick. All the lines will look good. It doesn't matter how you do them. And overall, with all those tiny wonky lines, doesn't the whole general effect just look so cute? I love it. I looked at a bunch of circular objects through my house to gauge how big I needed to cut the hole for my frame. I wanted it to be small enough that no white would show through and so I ended up with this bowl, measured it out, did a little pencil sketch, and then I used my X-Acto knife around the bowl just to cut it right out right there. And then I had some wonky moments in my cutting, but the X-Acto knife helped to get rid of some of those as well. Because you know around here, I'm not about perfection. We fix what we can, it looks cute in the end, and whoever you're giving this to will love it either way. So now it's all trimmed and fixed and cute. We are going to test it out with our painting. And I just can't get over how cute this is. I think this little painting was really fun to do, but I didn't know what to do with it. And adding this frame just completely changed the whole thing and elevated it. And I kind of want to keep it. <laughs> so I got to figure out how to give it away because I just want to keep it. And um, anyway, I used regular school glue, pressed it down, flipped it over so I don't ruin the painting, and then used my butcher tray to kind of give it some pressure and wiggle it around, make sure everything is super attached. And then that's the final piece. So I think if you looked around your house and found a pretty painting that you've already made, you could totally add a gingham frame to it and change the entire thing, elevate it a whole bunch. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for our last day, day five of card making.